So what happens if you misuse Facebook or Twitter? My favorite story in today's Wall Street Journal, written by Rachel Silverman, who's joining us from Texas. Rachel, are you there? Hey, good to see I'm you. I'm here. Hey, Dennis, how are you? <laughs> Fine. Uh, you're a little out of my ear, so pardon me. Uh, you wrote uh, an interesting story about uh, a CFO at Francesca's Holding, a uh, clothing company, who was fired for uh, talking about his business activities online. Tell us what happened. Sure. So he um, maintained a publicly accessible Facebook page and a publicly accessible uh, Twitter feed, as well as a personal blog. And on all on both his Twitter feed and his Facebook page, he posted you know mundane stuff about business travel and his family. But he also posted um, some um, information about the company, including about earnings calls and the company's roadshow. And um, what happened after he did this, he was actually terminated with cause yesterday. Right now, Rachel, you're pretty savvy on social media. You read through his postings. Did this stuff seem to you uh, worthy of being fired? Well, you know, each post alone um, you know, wasn't so bad. It wasn't like he was giving, you know, like deep, really deep company information. But that said, it, it didn't show a very um, high sense of judgment. Right. He, um, if I were CFO, I'd probably stay a little bit quieter and a little bit more <laughs> private about my companies going on. And, and, and even yet, as a non-CFO, I would do that. And yet it makes sense, Rachel, that, that people in positions with, with a lot of uh, information and, and power over a company should keep their mouths shut. But it seems culturally that we're pushing to more and more disclosure about ourselves, about our lives, uh, about the work we do. Do you think that there's a, a way to reconcile that or just there'll be casualties along the way and so be it? So um, companies are really grappling with this right now. Only about 40% of companies currently have a social media policy. So that means that the majority of companies don't. Um, but that said, um, many companies actually want their employees to be on social media. It's good for the brand. It's good to create company loyalty. And also, um, they expect that their employees are going to be on social media anyhow. So they might as well at least give them some guidance about how to do this. Mm. Um, but that said, it's, it's, a, it's a wild west out there. You know, with social media constantly changing, Facebook constantly changing its privacy provisions. So um, both employees and their employers are really trying to figure out how to best well, deal with it's this. Well, it's right a pretty now. rare example when a CFO or someone in this position gets uh, tripped up on these issues. Absolutely. Um, for sure. There, there are many more examples of lower rank and file employees getting tripped up on, on this um, issue in part because, frankly, high-level executives don't have a lot of time to tweet or Facebook very uh, prolifically. I mean, that was actually what was very striking to me, actually, how active he was on social media and on his personal blog. I was thinking, wow, he has a lot of time on his hands. You know, Rachel, I was thinking a, a very similar thought. What did we do before we had these time-consuming out? Perhaps we actually thought real thoughts and, and did real work and uh, contributed to the world rather than a a bunch of snarky uh, sayings and observations. Don't you feel maybe, maybe we all be better off if we just shut it all off? <laughs> well, certainly some some critics of social media believe so, but I think I think the world has tipped uh, so much in the other way that it would be very hard for people to really shut it off, at least for for the long haul. <laughs> all right, yeah, there's no turning back, is there? And Facebook's going to be worth a hundred billion dollars because we can't exactly. turn it off. Uh, exactly. Rachel, thank you so much.